Hello YouTube! I'm not in the shop today, but I wanted to show you something I've been working on for about a year or so. This is, I think, a late 60s, early 70s Sears Suburban Custom 10XL. It's been slightly modified. Probably the first main thing you see is a Predator 14 horsepower motor from Harbor Freight. It's a good little motor. The only downside to it is there's no vent cap. So it'll choke itself out and die on you. But uh, once you open up the gas cap, it's uh, back to life because it's got air in the gas tank. Allowing gas to go into the carburetor. Probably the next big thing you see on this thing is this big yellow tank. And this is an air tank for pneumatics. And what the pneumatics do is they raise and lower my plow. I've got a slight leak somewhere. I got a, That's that hissing sound you see. So this is tank PSI, this is regulated PSI, I have a Harbor Freight regulator there. It also has a uh, filter on it. You can see it's got some moisture in it. And then I just plumbed it all out. Not very good at plumbing, but it works. So this does have an air compressor pump on it which you can kind of see right here. You can kind of see the flywheel. But there she is. It's an old uh, Bendix Westinghouse. And then it's regulated with an electric clutch. You can see the belt there. And then I just have it rough wired. I'll figure something out. It does have a stack on it, fairly short. You do smell some of the smoke, some of the exhaust from it. And I also have a flapper on it. All that came off of eBay. Same with the electric clutch. Most everything I found on eBay, like the valves and stuff, were a little bit expensive, but uh, they work pretty nicely. This is my pressure switch. It's a square D pressure switch. And then I have a, a pop-off valve that will pop off at 135 PSI. Uh, the whole system regulates itself off at 125 on at 100 PSI. One nice thing about this versus other uh, hydraulics on tractors is I have a reserve so I can have the engine off and still actuate the plow. These are Parker cylinders. They also came off of eBay. As well as the rubber lines. These were pre-cut lines that I bought off of eBay. There's your tilt cylinder and here is the raising and lower, lowering cylinder. They're both the same. Yes, you do see the plow is slowly going down. I have a leak up front here. And it won't keep the PSI on that side of the cylinder. The whole pneumatic system cost about 500 bucks to install. If I was doing it again, I'd probably go with hydraulic, but I've been pretty happy with this since. I have LED lights mounted on the rear fenders and also in the front. They're even bright in the daytime. Pretty much blinding to anybody looking at it at night. Just looks like big eyeballs in the front.
I've got rear chains in the back and then I've got a homemade weight rack of cement block. It's about 120 pounds. Set back about two feet from the axle. And it just goes into a two inch receiver. One nice thing about this weight rack is I've got a plow in the front and then I got a big plow in the back. I also have another LED rear mounted tail light. And switches to actuate everything. The two on the right are for the front headlights and the uh, fender tail lights. And then this switch here actuates the pneumatics. So you can hear it actuating the clutch. And then this is a little horn. <laughs> It's a little loud, it's a blast horn. The tractor itself, I paid about 300 bucks for, and that was with the motor I built. Uh, the whole motor did, uh, was much bigger than the original 10 horsepower. So I built an extension onto the frame to mount my grill and also to mount a 2,500 pound winch. Uh, the winch does work. I have not actually pulled anything with it yet, which is a good thing. That means I haven't gotten stuck. Uh, charging system on this motor is a little slow, but surprisingly recently it's uh, been keeping up with the high out output of the LED lights all five of them, and the clutch. Some days it's better than others. It's not consistent with its charging. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to hear this thing run. Here's your choke. I always leave the gas cap slightly open, that way it gets air, so you don't uh, create a vacuum in the tank. Clutch is off and she's in neutral, so you don't run yourself over.
Well, this has been a pretty good tractor. Uh, like I said, it's a 1960s, late 60s, early 70s Sears Suburban Custom 10XL. Not too many of these around. I bought it off of my boss who was getting rid of it. I only paid about 300 bucks for it. And uh, it's been a very good investment. The motor alone is worth 400 from new from Harbor Freight, I think. Uh, but everything's worked out great. I love the fact that I can just push a lever and raise and lower the plow or tilt it. The plow will raise and lower at a minimum of about 50 PSI, and it'll tilt almost at nothing. But I also have restrictors on these valves, and what the restrictors do is they limit the air pressure be coming out of one side of the cylinder so it's nice and slow. Without those, it's very jarring. As you notice, the first time that I tilted it, that I raised the plow up, that it was very jolted. Uh, once one side of the cylinder is depressurized totally, uh, it'll act like that, but once you have air in both sides of the cylinder, it acts pretty nice. Like that. I want to thank you guys for watching, and we'll hopefully see you next time. It's been a while since I posted a video, so hopefully you guys like it. It's a couple months, so we'll see you next time. Please give it a like, comment if you liked it, and we'll see ya. Thank you. Bye-bye.